Paso police say they believe an El Paso mom who's been missing for months was murdered, and they say they've arrested a suspect in connection to the case. Now, we broke the news of the arrest online, and we told you about it during our 5 p.m. newscast. 28-year-old Ricardo Marquez right there on your screen facing a murder charge in connection to the disappearance and death of 29-year-old Erica Andrea Gaitan. She went missing over the summer after attending a concert at El Paso County Coliseum. Now, Marquez was taken into custody at a home in Far East El Paso, and that is where we find KTSM 9 News reporter Stephanie Shields. She's live with our update. Gaitan was last seen back in July before she attended a concert with the suspect. And today, that suspect was arrested here in this neighborhood in his home, which you can see right here behind me. Police are still out here investigating. Our KTSM.com team obtained the arrest documents detailing the investigation. According to the documents, police say they haven't found a body, but based on forensic evidence, believe Gaitan to be dead. Documents state Gaitan attended a concert at the County Coliseum with Marquez, then went to his home. Police say Marquez's phone records show he borrowed a Jeep and a shovel from family members as well as found blood in the back seat of that Jeep matching Gaitan's DNA. Court documents say police found zip ties and sand-filled shoes at Marquez's home. We spoke with family members back when she was first reported missing who went searching for her possible body in the desert months ago. We don't know if she's here in Mexico or if someone took her. I think she's dead. It's been too long since she's talked to us. She doesn't call us or respond to our calls. <laughs> say through surveillance video obtained near Montana shows the Jeep Wrangler the suspect borrowed driving to and from the desert area. The documents describe Marquez claimed the two got into an argument that night of the concert here at his home saying she left his house using a rideshare app. He is currently in custody under a $1 million bond. Live in Far East El Paso, Stephanie Shields, KTSM 9 News. Stephanie, thank you. A police investigation underway in Las Cruces after police say a school resource officer accidentally fired his gun at a middle school. It happened about 1.30 p.m. at Picacho Middle. According to investigators, the officer accidentally fired his gun in his office, hitting a wall. Police say no one was injured. Investigators say the officer has been employed by LCPD for eight years and has been a school resource officer for four years. Well, one of El Paso's oldest locally owned grocery stores and meat markets is closing its doors after more than 100 years in business. KTSM 9 News reporter Tatiana Favela is live at Silva's Supermarket in South El Paso. Well, multiple generations stemming from the Silva family have successfully served El Pasoans for 101 years. Now, shoppers say while they're sad to hear the news, they're also thankful for all the years of service. Now, back in 1918, Jose Felix Silva started and opened a grocery store on the corner of 9th and Campbell with only $150 in his pocket. Over 100 years and multiple generations later, Silva Supermarket became what it is now, a staple for many El Pasoans, especially for buying meat. Many longtime shoppers and employees say they're sad to hear that Silva's will close. However, the co-owner shares that the store wouldn't be a success without them. Where we are, you know, my father-in-law in one of his stores had uh, in, in, his, in his exit, you know, right, right over the doorway. He said, through these doors uh, walk the best customers in the world. And we believe that. Other longtime employees we spoke with say they all think they, they're all thankful for the customers who have been such a big part of the store as well as their own lives. Now, Silva's will be offering a retirement cell throughout the rest of this month. Live in South El Paso, Tatiana Favela, KTSM 9 News. Your Ways Traffic Chat, sponsored by Lachine, Vias, and Enderman Injury Lawyers. We are monitoring a crash on the freeway right now. This is at I-10 East and Copia in central El Paso right before the Spaghetti Bowl. You can see it is slowing down traffic. One of our Wazers has reported it there along the freeway. So we got some slow-moving traffic through the Spaghetti Bowl. Also seeing some slow-moving traffic from about Sierra Vista Mall to the Fountains of Fera headed westbound. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow, groundbreaking on some major construction along University Avenue in Las Cruces. Today, we wanted to know what this will mean for drivers and anyone visiting the Pan Am Center soon. KTSM 9 News reporter Selena Quintana with a look at the project. This is New at 6. 
I'm just off of the side of University Avenue, and as you can see behind me, it's fairly busy. These are normal conditions, and it's one of the main streets that students and staff use to get onto the NMSU campus, which is why some students are telling me they're not excited when it comes to the news of construction. University Avenue provides six entrances to the NMSU campus and has crosswalks along the road for pedestrian use. But the swift flowing traffic many are used to seeing won't be here for much longer. Starting January 2nd of 2020, the state will begin construction on University near the Pan Am Center, which will be an 18 month long process costing more than $33 million. One student at NMSU tells me he already has to leave home early enough to get to school on time, even though he only lives across the street. And now with the new construction, he's going to have to plan for an even earlier commute. Depends on the traffic and like with the construction, that's going to add time onto that. So like me, I live right here on University. And I still have to give myself 5 to 10 just to be able to find parking and all that other stuff. So now I'll probably add another 10 to 15, 20 maybe. And MDOT will be having a meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. at the northeast parking lot of the Pan Am Center where they will discuss the benefits of the project and what can be expected. And they encourage everyone to attend. Another student that I spoke with told me he hopes plenty of students go to tomorrow's meeting voicing their concerns, adding that students of NMSU are a big population in Las Cruces, and when it comes to making big decisions that can impact them, they deserve to be incorporated. Reporting in Las Cruces, Selena Quintana, KTSM 9 News. All right, Selena, thank you.